I think if you want to establish a closer connection with Africa, that needs to come through the study of specific aspects of African society. It can be through history, and history can give you a sense of what these societies are, are like in the, uh, and so on. But at the same time, it can provide you with new and alternative references. Many people uh, describe themselves as people of African descent and so on, but when it comes to uh, uh, having a sense of what African societies are like, what are the cultural references of Africa, uh, of African societies, what are the type of um, philosophies in a way and the worldviews that inform African thinking, very few people have a, a good grasp or understanding of that. And I think it's important, there are ways that different alternatives to deal uh, with the challenge, challenges of the present. And, um, and I think Africa also has solutions to offer from a cultural perspective. Uh, one thing in this era, for example, of growing individualism, uh, some of those African values, understanding that who you are in many ways, it, it's determined by the group uh, and the people around you. That's a very important African value, and they, 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 that, that kind of approach to African societies and, and, and their history can provide you with alternative references. We don't always have to look at the, uh, you know, to the north, to uh, whether it is North America or Europe, for answers to how we deal or cope with um, the challenges that, that we face today. But Equatorial uh, Guinea is one of the least, if not the least, known uh, countries in, in Africa. And of course, its history is, is mostly unknown uh, inside Africa and outside Africa. So that's one of the reasons. But more importantly, it's, uh, it has to do with personal reasons. Uh, I'm originally from Equatorial Guinea. Uh, my family is from Equatorial Guinea. And um, it was knowing about Equatorial Guinea it was a way to know about myself. But more importantly, I think it was the present that attracted me. I saw many things not working in the country, I saw uh, a society that in, in many ways have uh, serious uh, difficulties and challenges to deal and cope with the, uh, with the present and the numerous uh, problems that uh, we have today. And I just wanted to know in a way how, how we reach here uh, and, 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 and the history that, that took us all, uh, to the place where we are and understand uh, in, in more detail the uh, the, the, the reasons behind the inability of society to cope with the challenges that we face today. So digital age is the context in, in, in what we are, and it is one in which like, we see um, growing interest in anything that has to do with the present, especially the future. Right? In that sense, there is a lot of interest in, in the past, in history. Uh, but uh, the present has numerous challenges. One of them is that it's, our societies are changing very rapidly. And in that sense, we're losing a sense of perspective. And I think history, that's what history can provide. Uh, uh, it can provide the, the necessary perspective and also the, reference, uh, the references that can help us to, to, to make sense of, of the present. And at the same time, I think one of the most um, problematic issues about the present is that we are in, in the so-called digital age, is that we are bombarded with uh, tons of information. And how do we make sense of that, uh, of that information? I think that's the, the crucial question. And I think history, in a sense, can, and uh, in particular, the critical thinking, which is one of the main skills that we acquire through the study of history, uh, that critical thinking can uh, be a very powerful tool in dealing with the uh, vast amount of information that we are exposed to.